The funny thing about insane moves is that once you really think about why they're made, then they stop seeming so insane. You know, and then you really take down the sort of barrier you have between yourself and the capacity to make such moves. Now, I'm not saying that there's no such thing as a wild move, as an insane move, anything like that. I'm talking really understanding where they come from because it's not just about opening up your capacity to make insane moves yourself. It's more about opening up your conception of the moves that you should consider on any given turn. So often, all too often, we find ourselves trapped between move one or move two. And we think, oh, well, both these options are severely flawed. You know, we're, we get into our own heads about prediction. You know, maybe we consider move three, but they're all generally very obvious moves, you know. Uh, to really simplify it, it's either make the obvious move, you know, predict the switch, uh, or, you know, uh, or sorry, not predict the switch. Um, make the obvious move, you know, switch out to my counter, you know, attack what's in front of me, things like that. Or it's the obvious prediction. Oh, I'm going to try and catch the switch. I'm going to try and I'm going to stay in on this thing that might KO me because I think they're going to try and predict the switch. You know, things like that. It's generally one or the other. And what we generally try to look for or should be looking for is going beyond that because your opponent is probably going to be aware of this as well. So rather than get into a I know that they know that I know that they know kind of thing that goes on forever, then you want to look at positioning. And I've made a video on positioning before, why it's more important than prediction, why it's why prediction is overrated, all that stuff. This is not a rehash of that. This is contextualizing, you know, a move that really becomes that seems absolutely nuts, but makes complete sense once you have thought about it, once you have really forced yourself to consider every option. Now, a lot of this does come from positioning, so if you want to go watch that video, feel free. But, um, sorry, I'm getting a call. Uh, I will call back after this. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, uh, the, uh, yeah, positioning. So, you need to understand, like, what your position in the game is, obviously. Uh, but beyond that, you then need to consider you know, even the moves that seem wrong. You know, like, oh, well, why would I ever do this move into that move? And we are going to, we have a very concrete example for this uh, in this replay. Well, that seems insane. And then you think about it and you're like, really? Okay, that's not, that's actually going to, that, that makes sense, you know? So, uh, yeah. When you really, because even if you dismiss the move, even if you say, okay, I have Heatran into Landorus, okay, so what happens if I switch in Tapu Koko? You might rule out switching Tapu Koko in. There's no advantage to switching Tapu Koko in. And whether they use Stealth Rock or Earthquake, or they switch to something, you know, like, uh, I don't know, Latias, or actually Latias is not so bad. Whether they switch to that, or um, let's say Como, uh, well, that's another one. <laughs> Okay, maybe it's not that, but you see what I'm getting at. You know, even with this, you know, example I just came up with off the top of my head, it doesn't have to be, you know, perfect, but you are considering Tapu Koko there, even though it's not really concrete. So let's get to the concrete thing, so I'm not just, you know, abstracting random stuff off the top of my head. Hopefully you get the idea. Like, even if that move seems crazy and you rule it out, you have still considered it, so you know that it's not a move you want to make, and you know later that you did not miss it because you know you go back to a game later oh i should have just done move not move one two or three but move four it didn't seem obvious but if i did that then it would have been totally totally great you know it would have worked out and uh, that's why you consider it now obviously you don't want to spend a million years in the battle when the timer's running on obvious stuff you know sometimes it is going to be obvious no don't switch your fair thorn into that heatran but sometimes you know depending on the situation you can rule that out faster you want to cut down your options and then you know really consider beyond just the obvious ones what else you can do but sometimes you might want to switch Ferrothorn into that Heatran. You might want to keep Ferrothorn in on that Heatran, and you have to consider it because it's instinctual to say, "Oh, I can never keep Ferrothorn in on Heatran ever." No, that's you know why would I ever do that? But sometimes it is the move you have to make. It is the best move. So we are now getting to this replay, this concrete example, and I apologize for the crudeness of using myself here, but I can tell you exactly what was uh, going through my head. So yeah. Um, so in this game, I have an HP ground Volcarona, and this is one of those hilarious things where Volcarona is super busted, and it's probably going to cut through everything. I mean, 
uh, the only thing that really stands a chance is Spadef Gliscor, and unless it has Rock Slide, then, you know, probably not. It sets up, in a lot of places, it sets up on pretty much everything that isn't, like, Bisharp, or Amoongus if Sleep Claws isn't active. You know, I don't want to get Spored. Uh, I don't want to, you know, take a plus two knockoff from Scizor. So I don't want to get t wave by Slowbro. And I don't want to get Toxic by Heatran. So I have to set up a situation where Volcarona can set up for free because it's not just, oh, you know, Quiver Dance and then go for it. Because wouldn't it be stupid if you had an HP grab Volcarona that completely destroyed the other person's team, but you just half you know, you haphazardly uh, let it go to something that you didn't need to because you didn't bother setting up the situation right. So, okay, now, that's my side of things, right? My side of things is HP Grand Volcarona destroys, find it a way to set up. Akola, who is an amazing French player, by the way, one of my favorites from back in the day, uh, he he obviously knows if that HP ground Vol if that Volcarona is HP ground, then I'm cooked. So what I have to do at all costs, number one, don't let Heatran go down because otherwise I'll just lose to the Volcarona even if it is an HP ground. Number two, if it is HP ground, do not let it set up. So I don't know what he's got on his team, whether he's got Stun Spore, Moongus, Clear Spog, uh, you know, whatever it is. But whatever he's got on his team that can even slightly potentially slow down a Volk Sweep, he's going to do that. You know, maybe he's got enough Spadef on his Slowbro to where he lives in unboosted Bug Buzz and can T-Wave me. So whenever I go to Volcarona, he's going to go to Slowbro, uh, he's going to try to double switch in Slowbro to threaten that T-Wave. You know, and then from there we can start seeing how these moves develop. Uh, and you know, if Akola knows, oh, he's never going to risk that uh, Volcarona to a T wave, then he can do something crazy, like oh, well, I know the Ferrothorn is going to switch in to my um, to my Slowbro's T wave. Uh, so rather than just go for that, then I will double switch to Bisharp because Bisharp on a Cola side is also actually quite threatening to my team. So, you know, that's an insane move because you think, oh, well, a Cola can never not T-Wave the Slowbro because if the Volcarona gets a QD off, it's over. But then once we, you see where I'm getting at with this? When you really consider the dynamics underneath it, then these insane moves, like not T-Waving the Volcarona that you need to T-Wave at all costs, where it's suddenly doesn't become so insane at all because you know you're so threatened by the Volk that you have to not just slow uh, stop it from setting up but then you have to go further but you have to actually try to win the game first i.e. Bisharp so I hope I've uh, made that clear if not please leave a comment I will try to explain further uh, but yeah so uh, I haven't looked at this game in many years but I go with Lando because it's very safe and I just want to get rocks so Scizor coming in we can scout out the Scizor set if there's no defog on this thing, there's no defog anywhere, so I will keep my rocks, which is great. Lando also keeps Heatran from rocking. I get the rocks up with Lando, and I see that the thing has knockoff. Okay, so I don't have a Rocky Helmet on Lando anymore. Who cares? So I know it's got knockoff. I don't know anything else about the rest of the set. And now I go to Weavile. Uh, truth be told, I did not quite remember that. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, I... Here, I, let me uh, logic this out, because uh, I remember what's about to happen. I just didn't remember that I actually switched the Weavile into the Scizor. So that's insane move number one, switching Weavile into uh, Scizor, right? So what this does is a couple things. Uh, if that Scizor doesn't defog, then great. You know, I don't really need the Weavile, because as long as Scizor is around, Weavile is not, the threat, is not a threat, right? And as long as Scizor is, uh, or sorry, so Weavile's not a threat, so therefore I don't need it. And Scizor is also Volcarona fodder. So now I see it's got knockoff and defog. There's no chance of like an SD knockoff taking me out as I boost. Scizor is Volcarona food. We have established this. I will get two Quiver Dances if it stays in and knocks me off. And if it switches out, then I will still have my leftovers because this Volcarona has leftovers. So... Okay, now we have established that. I'm trying to figure out his move set. So rather than just you know stay in and you know EQ and you know go to Volcarona and Roost, I'm thinking, okay, well, what else can come in here? Because with Weavile, uh, something that might happen. It, well, actually, um, let me not get ahead of myself. So yeah, Weavile switches into Lando here. Seems like a, a nutty move. You know, switching in. Why not just uh, why not go to Volcarona? Why not EQ and bring Scizor down further? So, uh, with going to Weavile there, uh, it's not about, you know, trying to punish the Scizor on this turn, but instead the next turn, because uh, even if you live like a minus one bullet punch here, then uh, 
you're gonna... The point is that I'm trying to get Volcarona in on Scizor 100% safely. Now, the rocks are gone. Okay, who cares? Don't need them. So, uh, with this in mind, Volcarona comes in on Scizor, right? We've established that. I want to make sure that's very, very clear. I know I'm saying it over and over, but just so we know. So, with this in mind, we've gotten Weavile in on Scizor. You could say, oh, well, you know, maybe you were expecting a switch to Gliscor on EQ. You know, because this Lando doesn't have a U-turn. I think it was like Toxic or Knockoff or something. So, okay. So, Weavile would check, uh, would be a good switch to Gliscor, would be a good switch to Slowbro, uh, would be, you know, whatever. And if Scizor stays in, then we kind of want to provoke it into KOing us, because then Volcarona sets up. And, here's the cool part. Since Scizor cannot KO Weavile without allowing Volcarona to set up, the Scizor doesn't actually want to KO the Weavile, and therefore, it might actually switch. So, we stay in, we click knockoff. What happens... There goes Sizz there a huge chunk of health on Heatran, and it's lost its leftovers. So now it can't even live in HP ground at full and toxic base. So the Volcarona sweep is you know even uh, is even closer because I think uh, Akola was expecting you know Weavile to switch out and go to um, well Heatran probably or sorry Heatran it was probably expecting me to go to Volcarona on Bullet Punch you know uh, so but no I'm perfectly happy sacrificing my Weavile. Um, you know, and if he bullet punches and I live, okay, cool, I'm gonna stay in and knock off again. Nothing else wants to switch into knock off. Not Gliscor, not Amoongus, not Bisharp, not Slowbro, not Heatran. So, with all this in mind, we basically have this situation. It seems absurd, right? Absolutely nuts. Switching Weavile into Mega Scizor, its best counter, and then clicking knock off against it. But, we look at it with uh, all the context, and we see that it actually makes perfect sense because it sets everything up perfectly. Either the Scizor allows our Volcarona to set up and you know maybe win the game on the spot, or we make progress elsewhere. And all those efforts uh, Akola might make to try and prevent the Volcarona setup, well, they're going to be a lot more difficult to do uh, if we have the. Um, if we're already making progress elsewhere. Okay, well, Volcarona didn't sweep. Well, it doesn't matter because Weavile wound up destroying everything else. You, you see where I'm getting at. Uh, now, obviously, I have to acknowledge here that this is a very easy example of an absurd play to make because I have a massive matchup advantage with my Volcarona. Uh, these moves c must also be made, you know, sometimes when you're behind. Matter of fact, it's uh, very... But, you know, they work in both cases. When, you're, when you've got a big advantage, but then making these absurd moves... Uh, actually help step on your opponent's throat, as my old idol Goki used to say, because then you take away their chances at a comeback. You know, if you play too safe, they are going to be making the wild moves because they're behind and they're going to be trying to mount a comeback. And when you don't try to, you know, preserve all Pokemon that you need at all costs and instead play more aggressively, you know, while you can still afford it, being the main thing, I'm not being the main thing, I'm not saying, you know, throw away your Pokemon and lose your advantage needlessly, but if you can identify a situation like this, then you make sure they don't even have a chance at, you know, flip, at turning around their bad matchup. And conversely, when you've got that bad matchup, uh, these kinds of plays are exactly what you want to be making to really catch your opponent off guard and, you know, make that ground. So... Um, uh, as you see here, we 3 King says, uh, what a weird exchange, and that was a weird exchange, but now Weavile KOs the, uh, yeah, Weavile KOs the Heatran, and now in comes Bisharp. Now, conversely, Bisharp is a big threat of my own, so now I'm gonna stay in with Weavile. Look, if I was gonna sacrifice it to the Scizor, I'm gonna sacrifice it to the Bisharp, because Bisharp is a big threat itself. So I get rid of the Life Orb, it gets a Swords Dance, still scary, uh, and now I'm gonna sacrifice it to my Ferrothorn, which I think is max defense for Weavile. Yeah, and it lives at plus four. Maybe I could have gotten right to it now, but I uh, just Iron Head and, yeah, I Shard. So, uh, it's, a, it's a, not the most elegant way of dealing with Bisharp. But, uh, yeah, so now the Weavile to be sacrificed. You know, it was worth being sacrificed uh, if it got a KO, but now after the Swords Dance, then something else. Anyway, uh, maybe that was not the most elegant way, but, you know, my team is not fantastic against Bisharp. Anyway, so now I shard. No need to make the insane move there. You know, there's also a time and place. You could say, oh, wouldn't it be so crazy if you knocked off? And then I'd say, yeah, wouldn't it be so stupid if I just got swept there? For no reason. I mean, Slowbro comes in, who cares? The Bisharp is weak. The job, you know, the task 
uh, assigned of making sure you don't get swept by Bisharp, it has been accomplished. Who cares? So now again, switching Lando into Slowbro because, you know, who cares? You know, I just want the Rocks and then the Volcarona and then, you know, the Weavile at this point. So yeah, the double on Amoongus, it's fine. Uh, and then I get EQ'd. And now... Yeah, so th this is, you know, not insane. This is just, you know, if I don't get spored, then I'm going to beat down the Amoongus. Now that it's been spored, I go to Volcarona. Gliscor comes in. No need to set up on that. Being very haphazard with Weavile's health again, switching it into EQ. Who cares? Just spam Icicle Crash. And now, you know, Scizor comes in, roosts. And now Volcarona. And, I mean, props to Okola. He was re his timer was going all the way down. He was really... He was not clicking his way through. So now uh, here comes a double to Slowbro to try and uh, live the... Vol but yeah, I think uh, with Rocks up, then the Slowbro couldn't live the Bug Buzz. At full, maybe it could. But uh, maybe not, because he has a Moongus for Keldeo, so less reason for Spadef on Slowbro. Maybe for, like, help with Zam or something? I don't know. Um, but yeah, Bug Buzz just going right for it, and now it's... Yeah, so now you see the, uh, how the rest of the game plays out. Starmia uh, scalds the Gliscor. And the rest of the game is straightforward. But you see how all this is unfolding because of that early stuff. You know, if uh, we had to deal with things like the heat train being annoying. I mean, who knows how the game would have gone. But uh, the, you know, now. Again, sacrificing the star meme. Playing it safe. No reason to... Uh, because here it's not about... Uh, again, the same idea, almost. You know, yes, Volcarona could switch into Amoongus there. No reason to sacrifice the star meme, right? But if uh, you... If Volcarona sets up on Amoongus, the game is over. So it's not about, oh, preserve Star... Because, yes, it is good practice to not throw away Pokemon you don't need to lose. It is good to have Death Fodder. But that is assuming that you don't have something that's going to win the game in the back. You know, to simplify it a little. Sometimes you do want to make that sacrifice to guarantee the position. Cannot stress it enough. Uh, you know, Volcarona sets up here, that's the game-winning position. And with T-Wave, you even make it easier because, oh, it might have clear smog, but you just spam Quiver Dance until it gets one full para, and then you have the boost, and then you win. So, yeah, uh, that is that. So that is why, yes, even though Volcarona could switch in, stay, uh, sacrifice the Starmie here. Although, if the, if the Volcarona was not going to win the game on the spot once it sets up, then I would say yes, make sure that you keep the Starmie, why wouldn't you preserve it? You know, this is only because, yeah. So, Volcarona doesn't even need to set up at this point, just clicks a uh, flamethrower. Uh, so I guess that one, I thought I quiver danced, but I guess not. But yeah, and that's the game. So, uh, thank you so much to, uh, uh, to you, the kind viewer, to Akola, uh, who is an amazing player, and yeah, I hope this made sense. I hope you got something out of it, uh, and yeah, so let me know if there are any questions, and I will see you in the next one.